Hello everybody, this is Jay Klodek. Welcome to part 5 of the Polar Lights USS Enterprise 1350th scale build. What you see in front of you is the progress that I've made on my model. As you can see, it's built up. Well, not quite. I've got the saucer hull assembly and I've got the saucer hole assembly taped up. I've also got elements of the uh, warp engines taped on. The only major sub-assemblies that have been glued are the secondary hull and the uh, central pylon after uh, several light tests. But uh, as you can see, I've got everything put together really nice, uh, showcasing how well everything seems to fit. Uh, one thing that I'll point out is that these warp engines and the pylons are all friction fitted in there. And as you can see, judging by the way this kit was designed, everything fits together very, very well. Anyway, um, sorry for the delay. Part of the reason why I haven't done an update in a while is uh, two things. One, I recently got a uh, job once again. And so as a result, I've been working my, uh, my full-time job, so it hasn't given me as much time to work on models as I had in the past. And secondly, I was uh, trying to track down a minor problem I had with uh, one of my Boussard collectors. Let me go ahead and plug it in, and uh, I'll show you how well it lights. But anyway, on the uh, Bassard collectors themselves, I actually uh, utilized an idea I got from HDA's videos. And what I did was I actually took a, took a, a small mirror, uh, beat it to heck with a hammer, and took the little pieces and actually glued them on the front of the Bassard collectors around, the, uh, around these little bulb emitters. And it produces a pretty nice effect under the domes. Um, so if you look at the, uh, the lighting from different angles, you can kind of see little twinkles of light coming from different, different spots. It maybe doesn't duplicate the effect of the original studio model exactly, but it's a nice effect. Uh, one thing I will point out, if you are going to beat the crap out of a mirror to do this, one, uh, what I would highly recommend doing is before you do this, put the, uh, put the intact mirror in one plastic bag and then put that plastic bag in a second plastic bag. Make sure they're Ziploc sealable bags. This way, when you start whacking it with a hammer and stuff, the, uh, the shards of glass don't go ripping through the bag and getting everywhere because you really don't want to step on a piece of glass or put it through a put it through a part of your hand if you can help it. The two plastic bags, reason why I use two instead of one is it's a little thicker and if you poke holes in the inner bag you still got the outer bag. Even after all that I still went ahead and took these shards and poured them into another plastic bag. As a result it kept uh, kept fragment loss to a minimum and once I was done just like HDA I just uh, glued the individual glass fragments onto the onto the front of the Bassard collectors. Uh, I used uh, Micro Crystal Clear for my glue. It did the job. I was even able actually to uh, glue them in in a semi-jagged fashion. I like the, I like the results. Moving on to the secondary hull, as you can see, uh, things light up pretty well. There are some uh, light leaks that I am having to tackle on the top of the secondary hull, but the silver paint I sprayed on the inside did minimize things a fair amount. Didn't eliminate every one of them, 
but I knew I was going to have to go in and do some touch-ups anyway. But overall, I like what I see. And there is some faint light coming from the uh, back of the secondary hull where the shuttle bay is. So my job of uh, masking and painting the inside of the, uh, the shuttle bay silver before layering on the, the internal paints on the inside of the shuttle bay seemed to do the job there. As you can see, I've got wires hanging out the front of the secondary hull. What I'll need to do is actually seal this stuff up really nice and once I get that done I'm actually going to run the power wires through the base here and the tricky bit is getting the wires into the base and also putting a couple of quick release plugs in there that way I have the ability to take this model off the stand for transport because otherwise it's pretty tall it's going to be a bit cumbersome and difficult to transport like this. I've already got a hole drilled in the stand to uh, mount a, uh, a switch. That way, when I plug this model in, I can power it down just by flipping the switch. That way I won't have to plug it or unplug it all the time. Well, if you look close, you can kind of see the uh, shuttlecraft in there. Now, as you can see on the back here, I still have the uh, the masks applied to the uh, to the fan tail for the uh, for the guidance lights. Those masks won't get pulled off until the uh, hull color is painted on. And as you can also see, I still ended up with a little bit of a gap on the back of the secondary hull, even with all the uh, the work I did to try and take care of that. But I was able to uh, clamp the back of the secondary hull in pretty tight and there's only a tiny, tiny little bit of a gap. Maybe about 3.30 seconds of an inch I would say. Maybe less. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I just need to use a little filler. Uh, when I apply the domes, the, uh, the observation dome on, dome on top here Things should blend in really nice, so I'll use some gap filling super glue there, blend it all in. Thankfully, since uh, the hull on this model is relatively featureless, I don't have to worry about sanding off any panel lines. Um, the work I did to uh, shape that LED that sits in here came in really handy. Now, my only concern is there is a little bit of a light leak on either side of the uh, the shuttle bay fan tail but there's a couple techniques I'm going to try to see if I can address that and depending on how successful I am I'll let you know what I did uh, but what I think I'm going to try is apply a little filler into the edges of the shuttle bay and once I've got that filler applied then I'll uh, apply a little bit of silver down there uh, once I've once I've covered up the gap, take care of the light leak that way and then uh, just paint the hull color and we'll see what that does. Okay, if you look close you can see the uh, orange glow coming off of the impulse engines. This uh, was achieved by using uh, some clear orange tint from Tamiya sprayed on the, uh, on the inside of the clear parts. I've also got uh, the uh, the Polar Lights Photo Etch set, also designed by Paula Paragraphics, uh, in there to give a little bit of uh, groove effect. And yeah, I do like the results. It looks pretty uh, bright on the camera footage, but looking at it in real life, it looks pretty decent. Doesn't look too bright. Okay, focusing on the uh, Bassard Collector, this gives you a little bit better view, hopefully, of the mirrors. Now, if you notice, the uh, the blinky pattern on the uh, Bassard board is working very well. Well, the uh, there's an issue that has cropped up with a few other people's uh, lighting kits from Polar Lights. 
And curiously, what some other people have been encountering is when they test these individual light circuits by themselves, all the lights light up as they should. The blinkies flash properly, but uh, when they hook all the circuit up for the model and hook in everything, and I'm talking saucer lights, secondary hull lights, both bassards and the motors, people were running into, a, uh, some other modelers were running into a problem where not all these blinky lights would come on or what would happen and actually what happened in my case is I got a deal where uh, one of the blinkies would come on uh, then a second one would come on after about a minute then a third then finally a fourth and a fifth and then finally all of them would lighten and start to lighten the proper sequence it was like the circuit had to warm up for some reason well I did some uh, email exchange with uh, Jamie at Polar Lights and uh, he was aware of the problem and I actually offered to do some uh, circuit testing for him and what we pretty much determined is that there was likely a problem in uh, the what I believe is the uh, the semiconductor material that uh, is used to uh, build the uh, the timer chip that lights this circuit. Uh, semiconductor material can be temperature sensitive and what we figure was going on is that somehow the uh, the timer chips were just a little bit more temperature sensitive than uh, they should have been and so therefore the circuit did need to warm up one way to confirm that was uh, one of my circuits being a little bulky uh, what I eventually did was I uh, heated the uh, the bulky circuit up with a hair dryer and sure enough after about 10 seconds of heating up with the hair dryer bam the circuit started powering up normally so we figured out what the uh, that yes there was a problem he sent me a new circuit and after doing all that work uh, both my both my Bassard circuits now work perfectly I'm basically using the uh, the standard uh, lighting kit setup that uh, Polar Lights used. I did make some minor modifications. So my circuit testing does indicate that if these Broussard boards are fun, if these Broussard boards do not have a problem, you should be able to use the uh, the stock circuitry diagrams, get everything wired up, and it should still work. Even if you uh, don't utilize any solder at all, and you just twist the wiring harnesses together and put some uh, shrink tubing over the top of them to get everything spliced in. I'm going I'm going ahead and actually soldering my connections although I'm going to wire in some uh, quick release connects on the uh, on the Bassard boards that way in case I have to change them in the future all I have to do is just unhook them put put the new parts on put the uh, connectors back on then just connect them back up and uh, I'll be good to go. Okay, I've got uh, both Bassard, uh, the spinning part of the Bassard collector is actually installed now. And uh, one thing I'll make note of is the Bassard collector on the uh, on the port side. I've actually sanded it to uh, diffuse the light a little better. The one on the back has not been sanded yet. And you, if you look close, you notice there is a bit of a difference in how they diffuse light. Sanding it is what I would recommend. Uh, it that in combination with actually sanding down the uh, the outside dome when I get around to installing that, if I can diffuse it to the point where you can't really recognize anything on here, even uh, with the lights on, um, that's good. It'll, it should duplicate the uh, the studio model appearance really, really nice. Um, one thing I'm going to experiment with on uh, on a set of these Bassard spinners, I've got a couple of the early spinners that are uh, that were a little out of round when they were made. Uh, I got a set of replacements for Polar Lights that are round, but I'm actually going to use these spinners to actually test out a couple of painting techniques. I'm not going to use the uh, the fan blade, the the Paragraphics fan blades in Photo Etch necessarily. Uh, one of these, one of these, I'm actually going to test uh, 
I'm going to try painting some uh, clear red on the fan blade inserts uh, to see what kind of appearance I can get with that. And then the other one, I'm going to try uh, a color such as white uh, to see if I can get a fan blade appearance that's kind of unique and maybe a little bit more closer to what the studio model had. And worst case scenario, I can always use the photo etch fan blades. Although I'm going to want to paint the uh, exterior portion probably in white so that the uh, the coloring is not quite as noticeable once the domes are on, even, even with the frosting done. Well, so that is where I am right now with uh, with my 1/350th scale Enterprise. I gotta say, Polar Lights did design this kit very, very well. Um, the issues I've encountered with building it are relatively minor, and as I mentioned, these pylons slot in really, really tight. I don't think I'm gonna have any problems aligning these sub assemblies, but I'll also point out that this. Uh, the pylon for the uh, for the secondary hole to the uh, to the saucer, very very tight. I have not glued that piece in either. This is just friction fitted, and the saucer is just friction fitted on top. Kudos to uh, Round Two Polar Lights for designing it like that. Uh, that means that I should be able to paint this model on sub assemblies. I mean, I'll have the secondary hull and the uh, and the dorsal pylon here painted up as one sub-assembly, the warp engines are going to be painted up as individual sub-assemblies, and the saucer also as its individual sub-assembly. That way when I'm done with the painting and even in uh, a lot of cases the decaling, because this is a very big model to decorate, means I should be able to slide everything in and get it all glued together after all the, after all the major paint work is done. Uh, then there would only be some uh, minor parts I'd have to put on the engine, such as the uh, the reactor loops on the back, and it should look pretty good. Um, I'm having a blast with this model, and well, don't know when I'll ever get around to building a second one, uh, but this is a very very fun kit to assemble. Now. Given its size, its weight, uh, the complexity of the lighting kit, I wouldn't really necessarily recommend it for raw beginners, but if you've had a few kits under your belt, I think you're easily capable of building this. Um, it can certainly be built without the lighting kit. You don't have to put the lighting kit on there. I've seen a couple of really good replicas done with it. Uh, but the beauty of what I've done here is I've shown that the lighting kit works as it is, I mean, granted, I did not assemble any strip lights into the nacelles uh, to produce that glow like some of the other modelers have, but that's just a personal choice on my part. I don't think it would be a, a problem if anybody did that. Another thing I will point out, too, is I did some testing with a uh, third Bussard collector wired into the circuit along with these two, no motor, but uh, the stock lighting circuit looks like it will support a third collector without any major problems. That means if somebody wanted to, if they got two of these, they could they could easily, uh, they'd have to pretty much essentially kid bash and scratch build an all new secondary hull, but that means that somebody should be able to do one of the old uh, Franz Joseph Designs dreadnoughts. Uh, with the three engine configuration. Uh, single engine scout uh, configuration with the single engine nacelle under the saucer should also be possible. It looks like you could uh, probably sp splice a single Bussard collector into the one PCB board that's in the saucer and not have to utilize the second one. Um, and of course uh, the circuit will easily power just uh, one PCB board without a problem. Um, Got a little bit of filler I got to sand on these engines, but uh, they're probably the most along. Uh, other thing I'm going to do too is the front, these uh, these nacelle fronts with the motors. I'm only going to tack those on with uh, micro crystal clear. That way I can pull them off easily if I have to get to the motors for some reason. Same thing goes for the. Uh, 
the front part of the secondary hull. Uh, they, the way the kit has been designed, there's a little copper plate that fits over the uh, the insert right here. So if I have to get to that uh, circuit board inside the secondary hull, I'll be able to do it. And Polar Lights has designed it that you can actually pull that circuit board out to a certain extent. Um, since I've cut down some of the wiring harnesses, I can't pull mine out quite as far as the original circuit design, but uh, that's okay. At least uh, I definitely know I got current going everywhere I need to do it. All the lighting, all the light circuits work. I'm satisfied. So there's just a little bit more work to go uh, verifying some of these circuits. I'll be sealing up the uh, the primary hull in a few days. And uh, I've already started taking taking care of the seams on many of the sub-assemblies. And once that's done, it's a matter of taking care of some of the light leaks with some dark paint sprayed on the outside. And then doing a primer coat, sanding that down, and uh, then starting to paint on the base coat. So hopefully my next uh, update will cover that. Until then... Thank you for watching.